Okay, so here what I'm doing is I am connecting all, um, all these points, or putting all these coordinates, K and L, in an X and Y plane that has L in the horizontal axis and K in the vertical axis. So here's our first point, point A, 20 capital and 125 labor. Right, so this is A. And here's our point B, 50 and 50. Here's our point C, 100 capital and 25 labor. And here's our point D, which is uh, 125 capital and 20 labor. Okay? And if we connect all these dots, let's do this in blue, we'll get a curve that is kind of familiar to you. I bet you, you remember a curve like this. This looks really similar to the utility functions or utility curves we were actually seeing in utility uh, theory. And it's not surprise we're using the same formula, the uh, same form of the function, remember? So this is what we call an isoquant. An isoquant. And it has the same properties that a utility uh, function had, which is uh, the slope of the curve decreases in absolute terms as you go um, away from the origin to or towards the uh, L, towards the x-axis, right? And, uh, as, the number of, as the number of units of labor increases, right, you go down here, and the number of capital units decreases, your slope of the curve is actually decreasing in absolute terms. And that's to, you know, that, that's the fact that labor has diminishing marginal returns. And that's what we said before, right? We said that when, when, you're, when you have very little labor, which is a D, and you want to increase your labor and decrease your capital, you can do this by replacing, all, by replacing uh, five units of capital with one labor, and this is right here, right? This is this point right here. But when you have um, a lot more labor, let's say at 50, it will take a lot longer, a lot more, to actually replace that capital uh, with labor. Right? At that point, uh, you will need 20, uh, uh, what is it, 75 units of, of labor to replace only 30 units of capital. So the fact that this isoquan has a diminishing, uh, um, a smaller slope in absolute terms as the number of units of labor increases reflects the fact that labor has diminishing marginal returns. And the same for capital. As you increase the number of units of capital, the slope is going to get uh, larger in absolute terms because you will need more capital in order to replace um, uh, a lot less units of labor. All right? So... Um, so we are going to, this is uh, the curve we're going to be using in order to uh, study production. Now, another thing you, uh, you should notice is that all these combinations of labor and capital give you 50 units of output. Though that means the same way in which a, one utility curve has the same utility along the same curve, the isoquan will have the same unit of output along the same, uh, along the same curve. So uh, let's get rid of these points now here. Uh, what we're saying is that this isoquan along every point, it's going to give you 50 units of output. Now, the last thing it should be clear to you is that if the, if the amount of output increases, then uh, the isoquan is going to move to the right, right? Because um, let's say you can, you can actually produce more output if you want, and since the form of the production function is the same, Every time you produce more output, what you do is you move to an isoquan that is farther away from the origin, but keeps the same slope. And the same thing if you produce less output. And you can try this on your own. What you can do is you try to do the numbers again, and instead of being 50 capital, try with 25. And just keep this, uh, keep this curve in, in there, and, I, and solve for the same unit of, um, solve for the same unit of, of, of capital, but this time, uh, for output of 25, and see what you find out, and see if, in fact, the isoquan is going to move, it should move, inside.